Okay, I really wasn't planning to film today. So this is probably gonna go a little bit nuts, but here we are. Hi guys, I'm Monica and welcome back to Winnie Reads. And today I have such an exciting video because somebody actually like legit tagged me. Like they said like, Monica, do this tag. And I was like, sure, I will. Now. I did run into a few problems with this tag and I'm gonna just get it out of the way because you know my intros are super long anyway so if you don't, welcome, my intros are super long. But basically I find I have a hard time sometimes with my channel because I feel it's very repetitive like I talk about the same books over and over. The reason for this is because for years I was in a huge slump and if I got through five books a year that was a lot and I also lost a lot of my books when I moved here so a lot of them I don't have physically so remembering them is kind of difficult because I tend to focus on the ones that I have here physically and also I wanted to focus this a lot on sci-fi the thing is I did a whole video recommendation on sci-fi so it was like <laughs> it's like so I just talked about this book and I didn't, I, I wanted to try, try my best to talk about books that I haven't talked about in this tag. I haven't even introduced the tag. Now this was a tag created by Raj over a Rajathon and it's the I want to believe tag and reading challenge. So I'm really excited about it. <laughs> but first let's get to the tag and I'll do the reading challenge at the end because I have the questions here. So the first question is pilot. A great beginning to a series or a trilogy. Now I know I said I was trying to keep this like to new books that you guys haven't seen from me before, but I couldn't help myself and I picked The Long Way to a Small Angry Planet. Now there are so many things about this book that I haven't talked about and this is a trilogy, but the rest of the books don't continue on with the same characters. We actually get like side characters and stuff like that. So that's really cool, but the reason I'm picking this is because I haven't talked about a certain aspect of this book. And it's that this book has a bunch of representation for different kinds of sexualities and different kinds of, you know, romances. This book has probably one of the best friends with benefits romance that I've ever seen depicted because it's based on like mutual consent and love and I love it. And also it's sci-fi, so it <laughs> totally fits in. And I would say this is going to probably go into my favorite books that I've read this year because I just really, really, really love this book. And I love Becky Chambers' writing, so there you go. Okay, number two was Squeeze. So what's your favorite monster in a book? Now this was a little bit hard to choose, but I ended up going with the Wendigo from The Curse of the Wendigo by Rick Yancey. Now I don't know if it's what I always say Wendigo, some people say Wendigo, I don't know. I say Wendigo. This is the second book in the Monster Monster series and this is probably the book that I like the most in the series and has the most haunting monster in it, which is the Wendigo, which is basically in this book it's like it's treated like a disease that basically makes it so that anything you eat doesn't fulfill you. So you start getting thinner and thinner and thinner and you want to eat everything, including the people around. But then it also like, it's seen as a disease, but at the same time, maybe it's so something supernatural. This is something that I love about these books where they kind of pose the question like, is this really just something natural and biological or is there something more to it? So yeah, I definitely love, love, love. I think this is really my favorite book in the series. It's so, so good. Prop number three is based on the Erlen Meyer flask and what is the best sci-fi you have ever read? So I struggled with this because I didn't want to mention this again, but we're not going to lie to each other. The best sci-fi I've ever read is Dune. There's, there's a reason why this is the book that it is and the pillar that it is in the sci-fi community. So. If you haven't seen me talk about this book, I'll link my sci-fi recommendations up in the cards. Are the cards here or here? I can never remember. But anyway, I'll link it up in the cards so that you can see a more in-depth review of this book. But if you don't know what Dune is about, it's about, it's like the pillar of space opera and it's amazing. And it's the most amazing 
sci-fi that I've ever read in my life. Prop number four is Clyde Brockman's Final Repo. This is the only episode that won an Emmy, by the way, from The X-Files. And what's your favorite book? Again, <laughs> I already talked about this in my sci-fi book recommendations, but I also wanted to add a little bit of something else here because my favorite book is Eternal Darkness by Miguel Angel Jado. This is only in Spanish. I'm so sorry. I'm I'm thinking of doing a little project of translating it and sending it to my friends because that's how much I love this book. I'm willing to translate this for you. But I don't want to get too much into this. You can check out my sci-fi recommendations video if you want to know more about this. So I picked another one and that is Station Eleven by Emily St. John Mandel. This book is about... <laughs> This book is about a virus that just basically destroys the world and how we live post-virus. But that's not why I like this book. I actually like this book for the past elements in it. So like we get two timelines. We get the timelines of when the virus hits and also in the future, like some years in the future, after everything has kind of settled and humanity is get, like has gotten used to the new normal. I definitely don't recommend that you read this right now if the whole virus thing kind of freaks you out, but this is probably one of my favorite books and it like constantly gets bumped down in my mind, but I really, really, really love this book. Problem number five is on Jose Chung's From Outer Space, which is a funny abduction episode. And what is the funniest book you've ever read? Now, if you know me, which I don't know if you do, but I actually don't like funny things. I don't like funny TV shows. I don't like funny books. But I do have a book for this prompt, and it is good. <laughs> well, that was fortunate. It's Good Omens by Terry Pratchett and Neil Gaiman. And this book is hilarious. This book is basically the end of the world is happening, except um, we misplaced the Antichrist. And this demon and this angel have had such an interesting relationship throughout the years. And the angel kind of has a little bit of mischief to him and the demon has a lot of good to him. So uh, they're trying to stop the apocalypse and to do that they have to find the Antichrist before either of the other sides does because both heaven and hell want the apocalypse to go through. And this book is just full of shenanigans. I loved it. I, I laughed out loud at so many parts of this book and if you're looking for a really fun good time, I definitely recommend this. Like this is such a good book to read right now because you know, the world seems like it's ending, but you know, it could be funny. Problem number six is Home. The episode was very disturbing and was never aired on TV, which now makes me want to watch it. What have you done? Like, where can I find this episode? I love disturbing stuff. So what is the most disturbing thing you have ever read? This shit. This shit. I still, I love this shit. I love how creepy and weird it was, but I don't know what the fuck happened. Like, I'm still, if you, if people ask me, like, what Anni Annihilation is about, I'm like, I, I guess there's aliens in it, I think. I, yeah. This was the most disturbing book I've read in a really, really long time. I can't even explain, I mean, I can try to explain the plot to you. There's this thing that landed or that was on Earth and it, like, they call it the Shimmer and it began expanding and every time somebody goes in there, they go missing, they never come out. And we follow a group of women that are trained to go in there and get information. And then what happens from there is just like, like, like straight up nightmare. Like it's what you would, like reading this book for me was like reading through a nightmare. Like, I, like you're here and then you're there and then some things happen and you don't know what is happening and, and the movie, as much as I love it and as good as it is, doesn't even hold a candle to how crazy this fucking shit is. And I love that. So if you really want a weird read, I uh, recommend Annihilation by Jeff Vandermeer. It's really, really weird and disturbing. After I read it, I just kind of closed the book and was like, like even holding the book makes me have jitters. That's how disturbing that was. Prompt number seven, which is, Postmodern Prometheus. This is a black and white Frankenstein style episode. What's your favorite classic book? I kind of wanted to go with my favorite classic sci-fi book, but actually I, I wanted to keep it real. So I went with my favorite classic, which is Withering Heights by Emily Bronte. 
this book is about a bunch of bad people that make a bunch of wrong decisions and then they have to face their fucking consequences and i love that and it's about legacy romances and i love me some legacy romance so definitely Wuthering Heights by Emily Bronte. Didn't expect that either. All right, prompt number eight is bad blood. In this episode, Muller kills a vampire, he think, or so he thinks, and he tells the story through flashbacks. So what is the favorite way they use flashbacks to tell a story? I don't know if this counts. I think this counts, but I'm gonna go with Vicious by B. Schwab. And this is actually a sci-fi uh, novel for many. People don't know that, but Vicious is about two students who are brilliant and they figure out that you can get X-Men like powers if you die and are brought back to life and it's told in two timelines so we're going back to their school days like their university days and their present time and the book ends when they meet up because they become each other's arch nemesis so this is such this is such a good book we're not going to talk about how much this didn't need a sequel because it doesn't this is a perfect standalone incredible character study sci-fi book so there you go this is where i start cheating because i have more than one book <laughs> for the prompt but you know what this is my tag in my channel no this is not my tag this is raj tag but this is my channel so i get to cheat if i want to dry a man jumps into Mulder's cart and they speed through the entire episode. What book have you read that is a non-stop ride? Of course, I could mention quite a few of them, but I've already mentioned a lot of them. So I'm going to go with Ender's Game by Orson Scott Card. This book is like non-stop action for parts of it. <laughs> but honestly, the, the parts that I remember the most are the parts where they're training, where he's being pushed and pushed and pushed. And, and this book just has like one after the other, just pow, 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 plot twist and things you didn't expect and, and things that make you sad and, and things that make you go, whoa, like it wasn't, you know, like what the fuck, you know? So <laughs> this is just nonstop action. And it's a really, really great sci-fi read. Now again, because Orson Scott Card is a questionable person, I recommend you do like I did and get yourself a secondhand copy. Obviously, I have a Spanish copy, but this beautiful hardcover edition, which I had never seen before, cost me three euros and I didn't give any money to Orson Scott Card, so there you go. The other one I picked is, uh, you know, it's not my favorite, but it's Star Wars Rebel Rising by Beth Revis. This is the YA account of Jin Urso, who's my favorite Star Wars character, and this is about her growing up, and you get to know more about her, more about Saw Gerrera, and how like they interacted before Rogue One, and I think that if you want something light and fun and easy to read, but that is action-packed the whole time, this is definitely a book I would go for. This goes from when Jin's parents are murdered up until the start of Rogue One. So if you're interested in this character as much as I was, I recommend this for like an action pack read. Okay, and then we have prompt number 10 with this Milagro. This episode, a book becomes a reality when the author writes it. What is a book setting you would never want to go to? Oh, there's a lot of them, but I'm gonna go with Bioshock Rapture by John Shirley. Now this is not a novelization of the video game. This is actually a book that explains what happens before uh, the first game. So from the moment Rapture is created until the first game and how we get to where we get to, which basically is a bunch of bad decisions, bad government control, and just like people being shit to each other and also drug addicts. And you know, and if you play Bioshock, you don't want to be here. You don't want to be where these people are. You know what happens and it's not good. <laughs> so I'm going to go with Bioshock Rapture by John Shirley. The book is actually really good and it does bring up some really interesting questions about like what governments should do to control people, what they shouldn't do, what happens when you just let people do whatever they want and stuff like that. So and again, in my cheating vein, I'm going to go with a book that I haven't talked about on this channel. And this book, in the beginning, I actually didn't like it that much. But then it just kind of haunted me so much that I was like, I kind of love that book. And that is The Girl with All the Gifts by M.R. Carey. And this tells the story of a zombie apocalypse. But this 
zombie apocalypse is different. This is not like the stereotypical the zombie bites you and you become a zombie, although that does happen. But basically, like, there's this fungus that grows all over Earth, and the spores from this fungus is what turns you into a zombie. And there's a little girl in this book that she is a zombie, but they're kind of training them to be human again. And let's just say this world is, like, it's post-apocalyptic. I don't want to live anywhere post-apocalyptic. And basically, the spores are going to get you if the zombies don't get you. So there's no way out. Basically, <laughs> there's really no way out. So I really wouldn't want to be in this world. But I do recommend you read the book. It's really, really, really good. The movie wasn't that good, but the book is really good. Finally, I'm going to do the bonus question. The bonus question is from I Hope the Smoky Man is in this one. So what is your favorite side character in a book? Again, a book I haven't talked about, but I'm going to talk about now is Sarah Waters' The Little Stranger. And there's a character in this book who dies before the book begins. And I'm so interested in her. And also, I don't want to like spoil anything, but uh, yeah, I want to know more about her. That's all I'm going to say. You, she is a little girl that dies very, very young, and I wanna know more. <laughs> I can't say anything without spoiling it, so yeah, this is such a good book, and the movie is equally as good. Okay, so Raj also added this little reading challenge, and again, I'm gonna cheat because I'm gonna choose two books for the first prompt and one book for the second prompt. The first prompt is to read a book about a detective investigating paranormal things and for this I'm gonna start with a book that was recommended through booktube and that is Rivers of London. I don't remember the author name but you're seeing the, the picture here because I have it on my Kindle and this is basically a world where magic exists and it's urban fantasy and the main character is a detective that is investigating cases that have magic within them and apparently the series is really good and i'm really excited to get started with this one and i also want to add in here the next jacoby novel now i have talked again a lot about jacoby here on my channel by william ritter but if you don't know this is basically sherlock holmes meets paranormal and they created a beautiful kind of non-high stakes book series and i really enjoy it and it's kind of those reads where you're like i want something quick easy fun that is not gonna make me feel too much of intense emotions, well, there you go. You can read Jacoby. Well, at this point, I'm gonna read, I think, Ghostly Echoes, so that's gonna be my, my challenge for this. And then the other one he states is First Contact. Now, for this, I'm kinda cheating a little bit because I also have on my Kindle, and you're seeing the picture here, The Story, the story of Your Life and Others by Ted Chiang. And basically, I'm going to read one of his short stories here, which was the inspiration for the movie Arrival. And I had already planned to read this, so it fits right into the, like, this reading challenge. Because I'm going to do a, another book-to-movie adaptation blind date challenge with Arrival and the story of your life. So that's pretty much it for this video. I was so excited about this tag that I actually filmed it on a day that I'm not supposed to be filming and I'm gonna try to get it up as soon as possible. Thank you so much for tagging me, Raj. Um, now, as far as who I'm tagging, I don't have a lot of sci-fi readers <laughs> like on my channel that can do this tag, but if you wanna do this tag, I tag you. And you can tell everyone out there that I tag you personally, okay? So without further ado, I'm going to bid you adieu with a reminder that I post videos every Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays. I always want to say Tuesdays, but I don't. Every Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays. And also sometimes I pepper in some videos throughout the week. And I am now posting on Sundays because I'm participating in a project called Seven on Sunday, which the Goodreads group link will be linked down below in case you want to participate in that. And yeah. Again, thank you so much for coming back to my channel, and I will see you in the next one. Bye, guys. You know, I really like it when I turn off my camera like this. It makes me remember old YouTube days when, you know, you just didn't cut that out. So I'm just going to leave it in. Bye.